Wherever you are watching us from, I'm excited to welcome you to the first edition of the Spotlight here on the Gambia's most followed online news outlet, the Fatu Network. I'm your host, uh, Mohamed Lamendrame, and my guest in the studio is an amazing, phenomenal, inspirational young police officer, Mohamed Y. Adabo, who probably stunned a lot of people when he decided to join the Gambia Police Force. Mohamed Y. Adabo is cadet assistant uh, inspector of the Gambia Police, and also he is the Deputy Public Relations Officer of the Gambia Police Force. He is my first uh, guest on this uh, program called the Spotlight. Credit ASP uh, Mohamed Wayadabo. Uh, good evening and then welcome to the FATO Network. Thank you so much, Emel, and thank you for having me. Yeah, let's begin at the beginning. Uh, maybe with this question, uh, why did you decide to join the Gambia Police Force? <laughs> Okay, that's an interesting question, and um, maybe an opportunity for many people to know the reason. I understand, just like your introduction, you said clearly, that it became a surprise mm -hmm. for people um, to see that I've joined the police. Well, um, I've said it many places. Personally, mm -hmm. I love uh, security. Okay. Yeah, I love security. I'm always admired when I see people in the outfit. Okay. But let me be specific. Mm. I mean soldiers. Okay. I mean, uh, I love the soldier attire. I love the khaki uniform. Mm. And in my formative years, um, during the primary school mm -hmm. and the upper basic school, I was part of the Boy Scout. Mm. In fact, at some point, I was a Boy Scout district uh, parade commander within the school and outside of it. Mm. So until after my grade nine, when I went to grade mm -hmm. 11, 12, somewhere in Amity, that was where I stopped this scouting exercise. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, joining the police institute was not the f first option I had. Okay. But, um, you know, I've, I, I can say peer influence is also one of it. Okay. I speak to some of my friends um, to consult them about the idea of joining police. Mm -hmm. uh, friends such as the um, um, Omar Diba, mm -hmm. you have the Usman Jassis, mm -hmm. and many others. Uh, who were all impressed that, yes, somebody else can join um, despite whatever goes mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. uh, if we want to change, then uh, change may make us have to join the system. Mm -hmm. So um, being, I don't know whether I call it risk taker or okay. somebody who want to face some new challenges, mm -hmm. I was not scared to really join and experience it. So uh, there you go. If you're just joining us, I'm with the... Deputy Public Relations Officer of the Gambia Police Force, Cadet ASP Mohamed Wayadabo. This is the spotlight, and then he is our first guest. So basically, um, this program, because we, I understand, and then there are young people out there who lack the inspiration and then to do what they want to do. And we are someone who is very young, doing extremely well in your area. Uh, you began your career as a teacher, uh, a student leader at the UTG, and now Deputy Public Relations Officer at the Gambia Police Force. Now. Let us tell us who uh, Mohamed Wayadabo is, uh, where you were born, and then your formative years in the village. Was well, Salasi in the town, but Jara is a village. No, Jara is a village in a city, you know, okay. whatever you <laughs> call it. <clears throat> I'm, I'm happy that you have given the background already. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was born and bred in Jara Brain, Jara uh, being the capital of the Gambia. Uh, of course, all of the people, Nyomingas, I know you must, must, must agree, agree with me, <laughs> you know. And it was also in Brink where I did my primary school, where I did my senior secondary school before I moved to Amite Senior Secondary School. So I'm a complete rural boy. Okay. Um, that's where I did my lower basic school, my upper basic school, and my senior secondary school in the best senior secondary school in the Gambia, Amite Senior Secondary School. Then there is debatable, yeah? Well, it's not debatable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a matter of fact. So. So um, after Amitage, I came to the Gambia College. I graduated from Amitage in 2013 okay. and joined the Gambia College. Um, started 2014, 2015 mm -hmm. when for teaching practice, mm -hmm. and 2016 where um, we were given higher teacher certificate. Mm -hmm. And I've started uh, professional teaching okay. uh, I mean, uh, from 2016 to 2022, where I was um, doing some part-times when I was going to University okay. of the Gambia. So accumulatively, mm -hmm. I've taught for seven years, okay. you know, um, all together. 
Muslim Senior Secondary mm. School being the last school that I taught okay. into 2021, okay. 2021 to into 2022. Okay. So you are also a rat? That, yeah, I'm a, as in runaway teacher. As a, as, as in I, runaway I don't teacher. want to belong to the animals. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so yes, from the, um, from the college going to University of the Gambia, where I studied and where I met so many amazing people like yourself. And now from the university, immediately from the university, I joined the police institution. So that's, that's interesting. So when you were growing up, especially uh, when going to Amitek, uh, were you having this dream of becoming someone else instead of becoming a teacher in the future? Well, teaching was never part of my plans, to be honest. Um, I don't like teaching. I mean, mm -hmm. I think I was forced into the teaching field. Mm -hmm. Let us be specific. Mm -hmm the teaching as a practice, as a practice okay. professional teaching. I never want to become a professional mm -hmm. teacher. Um, um, I think we were all victims of circumstance. Okay. And of course, uh, when you graduate from the senior secondary school, when you're somebody, no matter what type of results you have, mm -hmm. if you're not able to have funding to go and pursue your dreams in higher education, you'll find it difficult to, um, to, to, to go. Mm -hmm. So the last resort, was the Gamma College that was completely free at the okay. time to start. Okay. They call it a benchmark. Okay. Uh, when I was going to school, I had, um, I told you that security was never part of the high option. Okay. It was, I can regard it as an alternative. Okay. But then my passion were to be a lawyer or a journalist. Okay. I was an art student okay. at Armitage, and I, I love the act of journalism too. Okay. I've, I've been writing a lot of articles, okay. even when I was going to school. Okay. And I was part of the, uh, the arts team, the arts club, okay. you do news presentation during assemblies and etc. Okay. You know, and at some point, my brother Baba Y. Dabo uh, was somebody who also speak to me a lot about becoming a lawyer. Okay. And at some point, I changed my mind from being a journalist to okay. becoming a lawyer. Okay. Okay. You know, uh, but these dreams fade away. I mean, these, okay. are, these are dreams that okay. you have, but the circumstances decide what exactly okay. you're, going to, you're, going, what you're going to be. Now, um, Aside from learning accountability mm -hmm. as a student leader at UTG, uh, how did you know student leadership shaped your life as a person? Decision making. Okay. Decision making was one of the most critical things. I mean, university politics was like national politics. politics definitely. You come <laughs> from different factions. Mm -hmm. We were alliance. Mm -hmm. You know, I know some people will not like it when I say yeah. mighty alliance, My <laughs> but we were alliance, mm -hmm. and as a result we have our opponents. Mm -hmm. Every decision was contested, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, at some point, mm -hmm. even the people within your circle are not happy mm -hmm. with certain decisions you mm -hmm. make because they want the decisions to favor them. So decision-making mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. to not satisfy everybody, mm -hmm. but also to be that decision that is, I mean, smart, mm -hmm. that decision that um, can, can really address mm -hmm. the challenges that you're going to face as, as, a, as a council mm -hmm. was, was one thing that we face all the time. Yeah. So the issue of having meetings, conducting regular mm -hmm. meetings, listening to the opinion of every council member, mm -hmm. irrespective of the position of that council mm -hmm. member, and taking their concern mm -hmm. uh, considerably, mm -hmm. and then making an informed decision out of that uh, galaxy, of div uh, galaxy of opinions mm -hmm. and ideas mm -hmm. was difficult for, for me mm -hmm. in the initial yeah. part. So I learned how to make critical but important decision sure. making yeah. during, um, during those days. Of course, that means that you also have your analytical sure. skills. Mm -hmm. That's where we have the, and you analyze circumstances. Mm -hmm. If this decision we are making, mm -hmm. how is it going to affect the life of the students? Mm -hmm. will, will the decision be seen as a political mm -hmm. decision? Even if it is a political decision or otherwise, mm -hmm. will it bring any meaningful so change mm -hmm. in the life of the student? Yeah. So analytical skills, to analyze yeah. was too, too, too good for us. Yeah. And also, we are dealing with management that was far macho, that was more experienced, mm -hmm. that was more educated. It was an elite group of people mm -hmm. who understand the University of the Gambia to their fingertips. Mm -hmm. You, on the other side, have your own plans mm -hmm. and your own action mm -hmm. that you want to enforce. So when you come there, you present the likes of Taro, the likes mm -hmm. of Prof Gomez. Yes. We reduce the plan to appear that it's not even necessary. Mm -hmm. How do you stand your ground mm -hmm. to convince them that this is important? Mm -hmm for not just the student, but also for the university. Although Prof Gomez and other people are so reasonable and supportive. That aspect of presenting your ideas 
is persuasive skills. Mm -hmm. So I will learn persuasive skills mm -hmm. through the university leaders, mm -hmm. the leadership, mm -hmm. because also we partner with other stakeholders mm -hmm. and other institutions mm -hmm. where you'll have to sell your idea for them to buy your idea mm -hmm. and know necessarily mm -hmm. this is good for University of Gambia, mm -hmm. this is good for the, the Gambia government and everyone. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. since uh, the Jamia time, okay. no student union leader mm -hmm. was able to meet the president of his okay. Jamia for the past five years, as far as I can remember, okay. no student leader was able to meet the president of the republic. Mm -hmm. Even when Adam Abaro came, there was a council that was there, two or three, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they were not able to meet the president. Mm -hmm. We met the president. Mm -hmm. We met the president because we know bureaucracies are not the only thing where sometimes you can penetrate through other forces. Mm -hmm. I remember the statement from Taro. Mm -hmm. hey, I just called the state house. They told me, you people are going mm -hmm. there next week. How did you do it? <laughs> you know, so, so the persuasive skills, mm -hmm. knowing the, 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 the ultimate interests mm -hmm. of the student mm -hmm. and knowing how to actually, mm -hmm. um, um, I mean, do a lot of things mm -hmm. at a short period of time using mm -hmm. smart policies and, and, and direction mm -hmm. was very helpful. Mm -hmm. But also, what I learned through that university mm -hmm. was strategic leadership. Okay. Remember, we were voted into office when COVID-19 mm -hmm. was on the rise. Yeah when mm -hmm. the economy of the country mm -hmm. or the globe mm -hmm. has crumbled, mm -hmm. when life was too difficult, mm -hmm. when failure was too imminent, mm -hmm. when the, the, it was clear to everyone that the council cannot make it, mm -hmm. even with people with little blames, mm -hmm. that if it doesn't happen, mm -hmm. it is not their fault. Okay. It is because of the circumstance mm -hmm. that was it. So that was, it was, it was a moment of crisis. Mm -hmm. And that crisis needed to be managed mm -hmm. and controlled mm -hmm. by the leadership. Mm -hmm. So we managed it. When we met the president, mm -hmm. that was an opener. We came okay. in, in November, mm -hmm. end of uh, November. Mm -hmm. We met the president in December. Mm -hmm. and, and the president just put fire on, or he, mm -hmm. he sponsored mm -hmm. out the entire student week, which was a headache on everyone mm -hmm. on where to get funding. Mm -hmm. Because there was no acceptance from institution. Mm -hmm. Everybody became donor fatigue, and you were not able to access the required fund. Mm -hmm. Managing mm -hmm. your people mm -hmm. in moment of crisis mm -hmm. was one of the best experience I have gone through mm -hmm. as a Secretary mm -hmm. General of the University okay. of Gambia. And it was a learning point for me okay. that any other institution that I may serve mm -hmm. anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. I have the full confidence mm -hmm. that I will be able to manage with the support of the other people that I may be working with. Interesting. Uh, so those that are anticipating to contest in the upcoming uh, student union election at the University of the Gambia. Uh, you heard from uh, your former Secretary General, Mohamed Wayada, who is no more a student, but also, but now the pop Deputy Public Relations Officer of the Gambia Police Force. Now, you joined the police immediately after completing university. So, mm -hmm. uh, what was the turning point from completing university to joining the police there? It was a switch, just like a flash. Okay. And I remember in one of the articles written by Farmer of Fofana, okay. the surprise of the year, yeah, Mohamed exactly. Wilder was joining Gambia yeah, Police Force. Please. He was right. It was a surprise yeah. to even myself. Mm -hmm. Well, I joined the Gambia Police Force. I remember meeting the IGP, okay. who was part of the great players okay. in me joining the police. Okay. He spoke to me many times, okay. convincing me that he think I will do better okay. when I come to police. Okay. I have always doubted okay. that um, mm -hmm. statement. But indeed, he was absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And that's why I will forever remain grateful to him okay. for initiating this mm -hmm. one with, in collaboration, strong collaboration with okay. Usman Jassi, okay. uh, who I was supposed to join with. Okay. But he went to the bar, and wow. he never joined me again. Well, okay. <laughs> so um, I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, was, that was a great So great where did you think the IGP saw your potential? University during the crisis protests. OK. You know, um, I, I, I wouldn't want to go far. Yeah. But the fact is, during the crisis, mm. we were not too good friends with almost everybody, every okay. stakeholder, whether okay. it was government or any other person. Okay. I was the head of the communication okay. during, the, during the protest. Okay. And my language was not so much received okay. by the government. Okay. Because instead of student demonstration, okay. I would put mass student protest. Ma okay. Yeah, I, I, I was using escalating phrases okay. Okay. And, 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 and clauses to make it look big. Okay. You know, uh, because we needed the attention of the, of the stakeholders, okay. you know, whether government or university management or okay. the staff association mm -hmm. and et cetera. So that was when we, I met the IGP, okay. uh, the Minister of Interior, then Yankuba Sonko okay. and some other security 
men at the office of the president, mm -hmm. the secretary general's office, and okay. they they describe themselves as the security council of the of the country. Of the you know, and I remember my first statement to them was, I, we were not invited to this uh, discussion. Okay. We were invited here to come and collect our permit okay. for protest. Okay. So this meeting, I don't want. To, we don't want to go far to this meeting. Okay. But let me be, let me be honest. These are professional and elderly statements mm -hmm. who handle that matter okay. with too much of professionalism. Okay. And I also have that rap that tete a tete with, with them. Uh, yes, uh, Ture was a, the secretary general no. at the time. Okay. We went through my uh, my statement. I okay. know uh, we so they they raised concern on some of the phrases that we use. Okay that it could escalate something because it was a moment that election was too near. Yeah. They were concerned about the security yeah. status of the country yeah. and et cetera. You know, some other parts we agree, some other parts we disagree, yeah. you know. So from there, yeah. uh, we went back to his office to collect the permit, let the okay. permit. That was where we had a, a broader um, yeah. um, conversation. Yeah. It was okay. more of a casual conversation. Okay. And he also is the one handling whatever mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. So we had a tete a tete chat. He said, after the protest, mm -hmm. you know, we, he wants to talk to us. Okay. Then we started discussing. The first time he said, I think you should join police. That was too funny to me. Okay. You know, I said, no, no, no. That's the last thing I want okay. to do. I had, I had my mind on all the, all the things okay. that I wanted to do. For example, a graduate assistant Done. job. Okay. Because I was in a talk with a particular lecturer also at the university okay. in, the, in the school of BPA, okay. you know, um, to be helping him in some areas, okay. you know, probably becoming a graduate assistant. Sure. That was my target, not okay. uh, to join anything related to police at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you joined the police and you went straight to the communication department as a deputy public relations officer. Now, how is this job compared to your work as Secretary General of the University of the Gambia? Well, they are not the same. Okay. This is a school, this is a whole institution. Okay. Even the names are different. Okay. But um, let me tell you one thing. Mm. Every job you do mm. will have um, an effect okay. in the job that you will do subsequently. Mm. Okay. Every job that you do today and do it well mm. will have some positive effect. Okay. on the jobs that you're going to do, mm. you know, uh, after the after years. Mm. So the Secretary General position really helped me a lot. Okay. For example, I don't have to be uh, facing any Congress where you might be bullied, okay. where you <laughs> might be, you be bullied, obviously, yeah. where you can even be insulted mm. and etc. Mm. Now press conferences are too simple. Mm. Press briefings are too simple mm. to do. Mm. They are different from student life, mm. you know. So meaning I had experience of a of a tougher one okay. than you know when I joined the police okay. institution. Yes, police is more is formal. It's okay. more formal as compared to student union leadership. Okay. Uh, and then the, uh, you are guided by laws, okay. and those okay. laws you must you must respect. Mm -hmm. And also, it's a regimented institution. Okay. It's, it's an it's an institution of respect okay. for even the youngest person. Mm -hmm. For as far as that person is your senior, mm -hmm. you must respect that particular person. So regimentation is okay. like. Um, some transitioning okay. from that from being a civilian to a security. Okay. So th this is why mm. when our well, people commit certain offenses, mm. such as um, getting upset and acting angrily mm. to be assaulting people mm. unnecessarily, mm. we cannot tolerate it because you have gone through that induction mm. training, okay. rigorous induction training, okay. where um, discipline is so much injected in you mm. that you can control your temper, that you can control your emotions, okay. that you can act, you know, uh, very much professional, okay. even in the face of adversity. Okay. So uh, that is the dip. I, I have I've been transitioned okay. from Mohammed as a student leader to, to Mohammed as a police okay. officer, and that is why, for those that are closely observant, for okay. those that have been monitoring okay. my activities for a very long okay. time, okay. will see differences, okay. even okay. In, the, in the way okay. I approach issues. Okay. I was a little more aggressive. Okay. <laughs> Before, before than now. Than now. So before joining the police, how did you view the Gambia Police Force? Well, I saw Gambia Police Force as an institution that is incapacitated. Okay. You know, we're talking about before I joined the police. Definitely, yes. It was incapacitated mm -hmm. in terms of materials, okay. in terms of human resource, okay. in terms of capacity. Okay. I also saw, I saw I've, I've also seen and analyzed, assessed, mm -hmm in my own thinking and imagination, okay. that Gambia Police Force oh. is an institution that is responsible mm. 
for inflicting only pain okay. on innocent people. Okay. That they are responsible for all the maimings, okay. the beatings, okay. and the abuses mm -hmm. of human rights mm -hmm. in this country. I was even more convinced mm -hmm. by my assumptions and okay. opinions okay. during the TRRC mm -hmm. when many people mm -hmm. in the security sector mm -hmm. were invited to come and testify okay. Okay. and they confessed to killings, okay. they confessed to torture, okay. they confessed to maimings, okay. and they confessed to illegal mm -hmm. arrest and detention. Okay. I was even more convinced by the TRRC okay. testimony. So okay. for me, yeah. I thought in the initial instance okay. that it was against my conscience okay. and my instincts okay. to associate myself mm -hmm. with an, uh, an institution mm -hmm. that have uh, in their hands mm -hmm. uh, um, testimonies oh. of, of maiming innocent people, testimonies Not, of beating innocent people, that they have, conf they have uh, really um, um, done mm -hmm. um, really abuses that are beyond imagination. So this was your perception about the police before joining them? This was my perception. Before I, I, and in fact, my perception was mm. even more justified by mm. the TRRC That's testimonies. Mm. Um, and it was even more justified mm. by you know, your discussion with ordinary Gambians. Yes. Okay. And you ask them about the work of the police, mm. or what do they see police as? Mm. They will tell you the police was a tool for a dictatorship. Okay. Okay. You know, um, that have committed grotesque atrocities and scandalous human rights violations, mm -hmm. that it was the police as an institution that Yaya Jamme and his henchmen mm -hmm. used to mm -hmm. abuse the right of anybody mm -hmm. who has a dissenting view. Mm -hmm. So this was before you joined the police. Now, the outside view and the inside view are almost uh, different. Now that you are in, uh, uh, are you experiencing a different thing from what you were viewing the police? No, let me tell you. Mm. I think I'm very steady with my views. Still? I, I'm still steady with my views okay. that the police was used okay. as a tool okay. to abuse okay. the right of the people. Okay. That views have never changed. Okay. I, have, I have even seen some people who came mm. to advise me mm. that uh, some of the postings that I have made okay. against maybe some of these institutions okay. or maybe even against the government mm. are postings that I should delete. I told them I am not going to do it. Those are my opinions before joining okay. the police. Okay. I am going to police as a challenge for reform. Okay. And I'm interested in those reforms. Okay. So why should I delete anything for anybody? Because those I have joined the system. Mm. No, I'm not going to be used as a puppet for anybody. Mm. So the, the fact is, mm. I mean, um, this was the police. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why we all came together okay. as Gambians okay. in 2016. Mm -hmm to contest against that dictatorship. Yes. It was a collective victory, a collective win, mm. and a new dispensation mm. was birthed. Okay. Yes, let me be honest. Mm. Every new dispensation that come post-dictatorship that lasted for decades mm. will still have remedies yeah. of dictatorship exactly. in the new system. Mm -hmm. And that means mm. it has to go through revolution, it has to go through reforms, mm -hmm. it has to go through uh, policy changes. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Gambia Police Force is investing a lot of time in. Okay. I, 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 that was why I joined. Okay. I, when I have a frantic discussion with the IGP, okay. one of the things that he was focusing is, mm -hmm. some of the reforms I want to do will not meet me as an IGP of Gambia Police Force. Okay. Because there are visions that I want to change. Okay. For example, the, 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 con the um, building of a police academy, okay. where you will have to really train mm. the psychology okay. of the police officers, mm. and, and, and then they be more educated, more exposed, mm. and have more understanding of the laws and their work. Mm. Because it's all the mindset. It's, it's not, you can change all of these policies, mm. you know, and become perfect. Mm. If the person handling that weapon, mm. mind remains the same, mm. that policy will become, will become useless, mm. because it is not going to be put into any mm. action. Mm. So, the reforms are on, ongoing, okay, okay. and I am so happy that the government police force is not wa waiting for the exclusive security sector reform. Okay. We are doing our own internal, internal reforms, okay. such so that this internal reform, even when the exclusive security sector reform mm -hmm. kickstart, mm -hmm. you'll find out that we are at least at levels ahead of them. Mm -hmm. This is why we have a new doctrine, okay. and that is why we have a lot of policies on almost everything, okay. whether it is about sexual harassment policy, okay. whether it is about uh, crimes, okay. whether it's about 
we are having all of these through partnership with DECAF, okay. through partners with GIZ, okay. and other partners who are helping a lot. The German okay. police force okay. is training our men on crisis management okay. and crisis control, okay. and etc. and etc. The community policing is going out okay. to tell people what democratic policing means mm -hmm. and why police officers should be patient in the exercise of their duties, even when they are provoked. Mm -hmm. How do they stand the heat? Mm -hmm. When you know, it, because they are the one that are weapon. Right. If if I am armed, mm -hmm. I am more more than you. I yeah. can easily harm you. Mm -hmm. So how do you exercise that patience okay. despite all of those provocations? Mm -hmm. These are orientations that we are lacking. Okay. Before mm -hmm. the mindset of a police officer that is indoctrinated by Jammes dictatorship mm -hmm. was that you have a weapon to abuse mm -hmm. and you have right to abuse. Mm -hmm. You have right to arrest. Mm -hmm. You have right to incarcerate. Mm -hmm. Those concepts are now changing with time. Okay. But of course, this thing cannot come overnight. Yeah. Along the reformation, around the transformation, mm -hmm. there are still going to be mistakes. Okay. There are still going to be missteps. Mm -hmm. There are still going to be um, um, issues that are debatable and contestable mm -hmm. and can become, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, in the glad court of public opinion that they are bad. Mm -hmm. You know, those things will have to happen. Okay. That is for any transformation um, uh, system that is based on hands-on. Mm -hmm. These are hands-on changes and it is progressive as we move in. Your office is a very busy office. Uh, you have been as a deputy public relations officer of the Gambia Police Force. One, you have to be on top of issues. And the other thing is, it is also part of your responsibility, or it should be, let me say it in that way, uh, policing the police, especially the, the image of the police outside. How easy or hard is your job? My hard job is so hard and sometimes traumatic. I mean, okay. you'll have to withstand it. I know every crime in this country at the time, at the point of happening. Mm -hmm. Our crime control, the managers and our commissioners and our top security officers, mm -hmm. when crime happens instantly, okay. their first responsibility is to send a flash. Okay. So right now, mm -hmm. if I open my gadgets right now, mm -hmm. an incident that happened in Fototo right now, right now, mm -hmm. in the heat of passion, I'll be aware of it. Mm -hmm. And this can be mean anything. It could okay. either mean murder, it could even mean stabbing. Mm -hmm. And as a police institution, we deal with facts. Okay. We don't do assumptions. Mm. So meaning if there is a stabbing incident, you'll have to take a picture of that stabbing incident and send. Mm. When I came new, these were things that were disturbing me so, so okay. badly. Okay. I interact, these are the types of pictures I interact okay. with every day. You know, I interact with these issues of people being stabbed, badly damaged, badly wounded, okay. or somebody died. When we came new, there were so many murder cases here. Mm -hmm. So you go through that murder case incident and you see their photos mm. you cannot avoid it okay. you are the public relation officer you cannot avoid it mm. you will have to read it you'll have to see this mm. so that when questions come also that when there are misleading information mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. you will know how to clarify mm. so it is so disturbing okay. so we 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 you smile okay. out of frown heavy okay. frown okay. but that's the job i mean uh, when you go out uh, from this process, now mm -hmm. I am able to manage every form of uh, sadness. Mm -hmm. No matter how difficult it is, mm -hmm. I am able to manage mm -hmm. it. Before, I used to be a little bit emotionally okay. weak, you know, to explain certain yeah. things, yeah? And uh, especially when you try to receive certain information, mm -hmm. because not all information are fit for public yeah, consumption. Yeah. So, yes, that, that, was, that was a big, one of the biggest challenges that I face, you know? Yeah. So you are young, and then before you joined the police, you talk about how you were viewing the police and what the IGP is trying to do by at least uh, changing the narrative. Mm -hmm. So there are young people who are watching this. Uh, mm -hmm. They want to join the Gambia Police Force, but they might have the same perception as you used to have uh, mm -hmm. before joining the police. Uh, if I have a word of motivation for them to come and join the Gambia Police Force, what would that be? Well, let's get it. Let's face it, you, these institutions cannot change mm. if we don't join the institutions. Mm. These institutions will remain stagnant and our complaints mm. will continue if we don't join to use our hand, mm. to use our ability, mm. to use our ideas mm. to change them. Mm. So if you are joining any institution, not just the Gambia Police Force, mm. if you are joining any other institution in the Gambia, mm. you should know that all of these institutions are not perfect. They have all of the, they have their shortcomings, they have their strengths. You are joining to make change. So join despite anything that comes with it and do the little you can. People are going to talk about it. People are going to say, 
what you are doing, how you, how you affect their life, how do you improve their, 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 their trust. Mm -hmm. I meet people who tell me that I come to like the police when you join them. Okay. Of course, I have received a lot of calls from university students. I'm sure some of them will be re uh, listening to this, mm -hmm. that they want to join the Gambia Police Force, and I encourage them to come forward. Okay. You know, it is, it is, it is our institution, okay. and therefore it is our responsibility to okay. change it. Uh, we cannot have any perfect institution anywhere. It, it cannot, it, it's not possible. And for police institutions, we're changing every mm -hmm. single day. Of course, we'll find it hard. We'll have, we will have rough rights. Mm -hmm. uh, there are times that we will have mistakes, mm -hmm. very, very big mistakes that could have been avoided. Mm -hmm. But that's how we learn through it. We will make sure that we do the best, but this best is only possible when you also have the best people. Mm -hmm. Come forward, you serve your people, serve your country, and serve them in end, every other institution, including the Gambia Police Force. I think, ML, this is the best I can yeah. tell anybody that come forward and serve your nation. You're not doing it for anybody. You're not doing it for all the allegations. Mm -hmm. Come and avoid the allegations. You know, there's something, mm -hmm. something I come to understand mm -hmm. when I join this force. Okay. For example, mm -hmm. if they're saying police institution is an institution of corruption, you mm -hmm. accept bribes, mm -hmm. come and refuse to accept mm -hmm. corruption. Okay. You change the mindset of the people. Mm -hmm. For our office, for example, mm -hmm. when I came with Binda, mm -hmm. I have never worked with anybody who is as honest as Binda, Binda. Okay. The, my boss. Mm -hmm. I have never worked with anybody mm -hmm. who is as honest and as transparent mm -hmm. as she is. Okay. So you, she, is the, she is the head of the institution. Mm -hmm. If she is saying, I am not going to do this, mm -hmm. or we are not going to do this, mm -hmm. or Daisy, let us not involve ourselves in this, mm -hmm. or because I believe that this order matter mm -hmm. has some political implication, mm -hmm. and as a police institution, we are supposed to be a little bit more democratic, mm -hmm. or say, look, this matter is more criminal mm -hmm. that if we are able to do this and this, and mm -hmm. if they give you those technical advice, mm -hmm. if that's your fear, for example, mm -hmm. and somebody else is now changing the life mm -hmm. of other people mm -hmm. just by uh, demonstrating mm -hmm. her own act, not even giving anything mm -hmm. to anyone, you can do the same. There are different units in Gambia yeah, Police Force. Yeah. Come if you are the traffic, you are a traffic officer, for example. You are on the way, somebody come and give you money. You said, no, I am doing my job. I don't want to take your money. You are changing the mindset. You are changing the mindset also of people that are, that are um, dealing with you. For me, I have said it many, many times since I joined the police, that any police officer who involves yourself in any form of criminality and think that you have a public relations office who will go and cover you, cover you up, you are living in a false Wall. <laughs> I am never doing that for anybody. You remember the incident of a mobile theft? Yeah, in, in, I was here. In your fellow. I was, yeah. I was here. What did yeah. I do? Yeah. I admitted that the police officer okay. stole a mobile phone. Yeah. Look, when I had a conversation with IGP on that incident, mm -hmm. I'm just telling the young people how they can change institutions. Yeah. He said, you are the public relations officer. What is your advice? Okay. I say, General, the, 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 the claim that this is officer is not ours mm -hmm. is not completely true. Mm -hmm. For the fact that he has not received anything yet as a payment, mm -hmm. this officer is enrolled and enlisted by yourself, your office which you signed. Mm -hmm. And this is published. Mm -hmm. So this officer is part of us. Mm -hmm. What he has done is an act of criminality. Okay. And the police are here to fight against yes. criminality. Mm -hmm. It is only appropriate mm -hmm. for us to go out in public mm -hmm. and admit the fact that he is an officer mm -hmm. and he will be treated like any other suspected criminal mm -hmm. in the Gambia that we have ever interacted or arrested. He told me, go ahead. Listen, this thing, would, I would have never, never thought that that could have been accepted okay. by the IGP if, if I had not had that discussion with him. Yeah. Prior to having discussions with IGP, mm -hmm. there are other people outside who are telling me this is going to be a difficulty mm -hmm. for you. Uh, let's see, see how you are going to mm -hmm. protect your institution. Mm -hmm. Don't for but this is a general, this is the inspector general of police telling me that go and say it as it is. This and let him be disciplined. You know the fear of that officer? He is sacked from the Gambia oh, Police Force. Even After the investigation? Started. No. We, yeah, even before he started? started. No, he was enlisted. He was now a police officer. Okay. Who, you know, you have that, that aspect. Like, for example, mm. you, you have a provisional period of six months. Six months. After okay. that provisional period, okay. you go, you are fully enlisted and start receiving salary. Okay. But within that in, in interim, you are enlisted, okay. meaning you can act as a police okay. officer. Okay. So he was, he was in action because he was given uh, the OSDG Lansing, the Office okay. of the, uh, sorry, on the service of the government, mm -hmm. government Lansing, yeah. and etc. So he committed a crime. Then he was a police, police officer. officer. 
So for me, as a public relations officer, mm. my responsibility is not to lie. Okay. It's not to come to TF, uh, Fatu, mm. uh, Fatu Network mm. or any other media house mm. to go and say, uh, this is not our officer, mm. we are not accepting responsibility. Mm. That will be very dishonest from my own mm. side. That means I am contributing mm. to the decadence of the institutions mm. that I am complaining or saying everything mm. again. That means I am covering lies. Okay. And that means I am not one person who is ready to accept accountability mm -hmm. and transparency. Mm -hmm. And then when I came here, that was my exact mm -hmm. word. The Gambia Police Force, part of our reforms, mm -hmm. in the, at the heart of our reforms is transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. And that means we will not be scared to hold our own people mm -hmm. accountable for all of their actions mm -hmm. and inactions. This officer is our officer, and he has committed a crime by stealing a phone mm -hmm. from Nyofele, mm -hmm. and he will be disciplined accordingly. Mm -hmm. He was arrested. Yes, he was detained, and after our investigation, mm -hmm. we found him as, as against, mm -hmm. totally against the code of conduct of the Gambia mm -hmm. Police Force, and he was sacked. Okay. Interesting. It's as simple as that. So um, I think we've run out of time. Now uh, we have to conclude the program here. Uh, Cadet Assistant Superintendent of Police, uh, Mohamed Wayadabo, who is the Deputy Public Relations Officer of the Gambia Police Force. Uh, you, are my, you have been my first guest wow. uh, on this platform. So. Um, Thank you so very much for honoring the invitation to come here and share your life story with us uh, from being a teacher to police officer and also serving as the Secretary General of the University of the Gambia Student Union. Until then, it is a bye from us.